Well, last month, Norway's parliament voted overwhelmingly to conscript women into its armed forces, becoming the first European and first NATO country to make military service compulsory for both genders. The reason, rights and duties should be the same for all. Now, should Singapore do the same? Let's look at the pluses and minuses of this topic. Women in fatigues are rare to see. In fact, you're more likely to see them on the tube or on the big screen than on the streets. Still, there are some who would like to see more GI Janes in the Singapore military and even suggest they be drafted into the SAF. They say drafting women would solve a manpower issue given Singapore's falling birth rates. Others say it's about gender equality. If men have to serve national service, then women should too. Moreover, they say, the move would help to strengthen national cohesion and ensure that women don't take Singapore's security for granted. On the flip side, the average woman does not have the same physical strength as men, making it a challenge for them to meet personnel requirements. Incorporating women into Singapore's fighting force would also disrupt the family and compromise maternal responsibilities. And then there is the economic cost of taking women out of the workforce for two years. So Bernard, should women do national service or perhaps a modified form of NS? One of the secondary purposes of national service was always nation building. This idea of giving a, a, a Singaporeans a, 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 a common set of experiences. Last time I checked, uh, there's a fully half of the population, fully half of the nation that hasn't gone through that kind of experience. So why should they be excluded? Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of national service for women. I'm not, I'm not convinced about the argument that they should go into the military services and it's not simply the, 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 the physical strength argument. Yes. Um, historically, we've shown women in battle. Um, historically, women have been deployed in military services and very often women actually ended, ended up outperforming men uh, in certain aspects of military services where physical strength wasn't absolutely necessary. So what can our women do? Um, there's a whole series of national life um, 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 which should be part and parcel of, 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 of national service. Why should national service simply be about the military service itself? For example? Nursing, um, um, education, um, the, all these are all aspects of national life. Mm -hmm. um, why, should not, why should not women um, 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 be deployed in these other areas as well? And of course, if women wanted to serve in the military, I, I, I would say, by all means, please go ahead. Uh, Suresh, women in national service? From a, from yes a different no? perspective. Yes. Um, the thing about national service is that it is disruptive. Mm -hmm. And we can't avoid that it will be very disruptive. So the question is, is that disruption worth it? Now, when we look at national service in terms of the armed forces protecting Singapore, the primary question is, is there a critical need? Is there a critical need to enlist women to help with the defense of Singapore? And if there isn't a critical need to do that, then is it worth going through the disruption for the women just to give them uh, that shared sense of bonding that they have gone through national service? And my answer to that is first, there isn't a critical need. And secondly, because there isn't a critical need, there's no need to go through that disruption. There are many women in Singapore who participate in all sorts of voluntary service uh, and, and women can do that if they want, but there is no need to draft them into any kind of compulsory service. But aren't we supposedly facing, facing manpower shortages? Um, didn't the SAF end, end up having to scale down quite significantly the size of the battalion, uh, which basically points to manpower, well, let's not use manpower, <laughs> human resource shortages. Yeah. Well, I think it's a combination of things. It's not because of human resource uh, shortages that we've scaled down the, bata the battalion or the brigade. It's because we have so much extra firepower, combat multipliers. We are uh, integrating our different fighting units so much better that we can achieve the same, if not more, with less men. And that's the real reason why we're scaling down. And in fact, um, in other areas of the, of the military, we are scaling up. So, for example, the number of officers in the division headquarters or brigade headquarters is going up significantly. Yep. Yeah. So, it's not that, you know, um, we are scaling down because it's a shortage of manpower. We are reallocating the manpower in a new way so that the third generation army can fight the 21st century war. Hmm.